So this is a demo of a quick little uh, short deadline project uh, going on this summer. Basically it uh, reads in uh, drone photos and the geotagging information and the photo information from uh, the photos taken by a drone and generates a Google Earth network link to show those photos as photo overlays. The use case is for inspection of large 3D objects, such as a stadium. So I've got Google Earth here with uh, their very nice model of Minneapolis and the U.S. Bank Stadium. And I have a folder of approximately 688 drone photos taken at close range of the U.S. Bank Stadium. Some of them show signs of wear and tear, and this is a inspection flight so if I've got a photo like this doesn't really tell me a whole lot about where that photo was taken in relation to the overall structure and there's several of these photos that can be taken all over just looking at the photos it's hard to tell where the photo was taken even if the photo has anything in it that we would be interested in seeing so this tool takes the photos and superimposes them on top of Google Earth where they're supposed to go in the direction that they're supposed to go. The workflow is pretty simple. I've got some controls over here that allow me to um, override the behavior of uh, the link in Google Earth. I can uh, choose a file in the folder that I want. This is sort of a clue here because what I really want is I just want all the files in the folder but uh, I, I, was, uh, I didn't have time to make a choose folder dialog, so I'm just picking a file, and then whatever folder that file happens to be in, I'm also selecting all of the other JPEG files that are in that folder. So I've got a list here of about 688 JPEG files that were taken during this uh, set of flights around the stadium a couple of weeks ago. And I can click on one of them, I get a little preview image. Uh, if that's not enough information, I can click on it and get a larger view of it. It's still not full scale. These are really high resolution models. The tool actually only works with one image at a time uh, because loading up 600 images would be um, uh, very memory intensive, shall we say. Okay, so this photo shows a little bit of the kind of wear and tear that they're looking for. Or maybe those are bird droppings, I'm not sure. But we're going to add it to the list anyway. So I'll go down through here a little bit more. There's another one. I've already picked out a few of these. Now I can add and remove photos from this selected photos list. So the source photos is all of the photos that are in the um, the photos folder unsorted unfiltered and I can go through here and I can look at some of them and see if those are the kind that have the uh, sort of thing that we're looking for you also wouldn't want to um, send all of these photos over a network link right now I'm running this locally so everything's happening on the same machine but this could just as easily push all of this, this information up to a web server and the network link could be run from anywhere that has access to that web address and a couple more let's see We'll add that one. We'll add that one. We'll remove this one. Because it's not the one I wanted. So, I've got this list of photos here. I'm going to select the, uh, the KML file that I want to use. And this is the file that's also referenced by this network link over here in Google Earth. So I've got this uh, GE link gen link that I've created. It's pointing to that same file that I've just selected to overwrite. And then if I come over here, I can look at all the EXIF data from the 
images that I've selected. And this is the data that it's going to use to build the KML file. A couple other things I need to do before I build my KML file. I want to make sure that I have the field of view set to something that works for this. The field of view is determined by a lot of things. And it doesn't necessarily reflect the field of view of the camera on the drone when the photos were taken. This is the field of view that I want my camera to have in Google Earth and it actually is determined more by the aspect ratio of the photo and the window that I'm viewing Google Earth in than anything else. Uh, the near range is how close the photo appears to the camera and it also goes into determining the right sort of uh, view for us to, in Google Earth. So both of these things work together. These other options down here can vary from drone manufacturer to drone manufacturer. all depends on what kind of camera. If the camera's pointed down or if the camera's on a gimbal and pointed forward, uh, I can do things like I can ignore the roll. I know that this drone that took these, the camera was on a gimbal and the gimbal was trying to keep the camera as uh, horizontal as possible. So I actually want to ignore the roll that's recorded by the drone because that's the role of the drone, not necessarily the role of the camera. And I know it wasn't a vertical camera, so I'm going to uncheck that. The difference between vertical camera and not vertical camera, it uses, uses a different direction for zero when it's counting the, uh, the tilt of the camera. Um, and you just sort of have to play around with these and look at the drone, uh, look at the drone data, or if you know what kind of drone was used to uh, capture the photos. Help you set those up. Okay, so now I'm ready to build my KML file. I build my KML file, my little display window that's probably going to go away sometime in the near future. It fills with this ugly XML looking stuff. That's the uh, information that Google Earth or any other GIS package that understands KML can use. If I come back over here to Google Earth, I see that my GE LinkedIn link has been updated with the same number of photos that appears in my working photos list over here. And if I double click on one of them, my Google Earth view flies over to it. And I see the photo superimposed over the 3D model where it's supposed to go. So I'm using the the information off of the drone and out of the photo to place the camera view here and to superimpose this photo on top of the 3D model. I can zoom in a little bit and even pan around and here's where I get the full benefit of the full resolution of the photo. I can really zoom in there and take a look at what's going on on that photo and I see where it is relative to the 3D model. I can even exit out a little bit and get an idea of where on the stadium the drone was looking when it took that photo. We'll come down here and take a look at another one. Okay, so this one I don't have, I'm really close to the building on this one. So I'm going to come over here and adjust my near angle or near distance. Not entirely sure what those units are. Rebuild my KML file. Come back over here to Google Earth. My network link is set to automatically update every time, um, every few seconds. So if it looks at that file and sees that that file has changed, then it will um, update that file or update its network link. and I can go back and forth. This is a live connection. So I can come over here and I can say that one didn't do exactly the job that I wanted it to do. I can remove that photo. I can remove any of these photos that I don't want and then I can go back through and add some more. And 
I'm just going to pick one that looks sort of interesting. Oh, there's, there's an interesting one. So I'll add that to it. 365 is the new one. Rebuild my KML. Come over here to Google Earth. My network link updates. And there's my new photo, 365. So future plans for the project, uh, I'd want to be able to have an option to have this package up all the photos and save this uh, KML as a self-contained KMZ file that we could store and uh, distribute as we want. Um, I haven't tested it online in theory. Uh, there should be no difference between running it locally and uh, running it off my web server here at the university. Um, but that's where that's at. Thanks for watching.